Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, here is my controller review for the Afterglow wired controller for the Xbox 360 by PDP. It's the AX1s. It's wired. It's pretty damn awesome. This is just the box here. It also glows in green, blue, and red, which is pretty insane. Here's it right here. I'll uh, pick you up and show you here. What's going on with this baby? So, pretty loosey-goosey thumbsticks, which I thought was pretty impressive. It's kind of more like a Okay, P PS2, PS3 controller, like that. Uh, normal buttons, everything's about the same on that. Different but keypad on that. What I find, a couple of the bonuses though, is that these are really loosey-goosey. The triggers have a way better snapback than the regular Xbox controller. Um, and, it's on the back, it's got a little button there. When you click that, where's this button? Where did it go? Eh. It glows. Or it did glow. <laughs> eh. There we go. See? Glows blue. Which is very, very cool. As I said, you can also get in green and red as well. I like the blue. It's pretty sexy. Uh, a couple disadvantages, of course, of, with this controller is that I find the bumper buttons stick a little bit, especially if you're hitting them right at this end. If you're hitting them up here, it kind of sticks a little bit too. If you're in the middle, you're not too bad, but on the sides and you're in a clutch situation, it's kind of sketchy. Same thing with the other side. Um, the yellow, the your buttons here, they stick a teeny bit if, you, if you're like me, I kind of push them in, like weird. <coughs> X button isn't too bad, but I find the Y is a little interesting. Uh, basically, it's pretty sick. And uh, now I'm going to show you guys what it kind of looks like in, on, your, uh, on your computer. And Alright guys, what I've got open now is the x Pattern control system. You can download this if you just Google it, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. Now what you want to do now is find, sorry, whoops, go to here to start off. You don't originally get all these buttons down here. Go to settings, go to your sticks, assign your sticks, enable them, and it'll do, it'll have like a little detection thing you need to do. It's pretty simple to do, don't worry about it. And that will assign them so this is stick one and stick two and same thing with the d-pad as you can see and then you go to buttons you can assign any button you want really see I got my triggers up here that's my Y my B my X and my A uh, triggers same thing you just use that's for your left trigger and your right trigger and after you're done adjusting all that, you hit finish. You don't really have to. It close. I like doing it. Uh, and then once you get into here, as you can see, it's in the same sort of loadout. Once you're in that screen, by the way, you can drag and drop so you can kind of know where they are and it's a little easier. And uh, once you're in this screen, for example, uh, see how that is my right bumper that I'm clicking right now? And what you can do there is you click on that and you can adjust it. Sorry, I can't really see that well to any button on the keyboard, any button on your num number pad, and any button, mouse wheel on the mouse, any extra mouse buttons, any anything really, it's pretty cool, any directional key, which is pretty awesome, and then also what you can do, this is my left control stick for movement, Doesn't you can't really show it because it gets cut off down here, but um, you can uh, you can adjust it so it's uh, like a WSAD format, as in on the keyboard. When that happens, it puts up the WADS right there, and then you can also adjust it to arrows, mouse buttons, uh, and there's some other ones too. There's number pad, and etc., which is pretty awesome. This one here is the your that's the D pad, which you can also adjust to the same. Thing, and the right analog stick, same idea. Along with this is that you can, that's my start, my select, and triggers and whatnot. And this final bit over here, you click that, and it allows you to adjust your dead zones with your triggers, which is pretty awesome. Hopefully this uh, this guide helped you guys, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Hope you get As you can see now, I've uh, <coughs> basically got a general loadout here. Uh, the only problem I have with the 
this sort of setup is you actually cannot assign a button to both crouch and prone without using something on the D-pad, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, let's go get some gameplay on, shall we? Proceed. All right, guys, here's some gameplay with the controller. Real quick, a few uh, downers of this is that um, you guys, of course, can't tell, but it's got a real nasty ADS lock. I don't know. It's not that good for sniping, in my opinion, compared to the Xbox controller. Also, you can't crouch to prone. That's my crouch button right there. You can set it up so you can just go straight to prone or just crouch. But, you know, whatever. I also find the sprinting button on the uh, L3 as it usually is. In, uh, what's it called? On the controller as itself. It's kind of lame. Also, the uh, it's pretty tight in the way of spinning around. But I'm sure you can figure out how to adjust that. Even though this is at full sensitivity. Wait, here, let's switch my mouse and the keyboard. As you can see, like that's how fast it is on the keyboard, and here's it on the controller. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Woo, woo, woo. And a couple things you can do though, they're kind of cool. Eh. I, fail. I can, I normally can't catch them. Save my life. Oh, it's kind of interesting, and of course you can use it with other... <laughs> 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 